We did not know of white color or black color. We were Africans. We were Africans. But the missionaries came in and they told us about Christianity. They told us about Jesus Christ. They told us about the angels who were white and the devil who was black. Then they turn around and say, the angels are desirable. They do the wonderful things. We must uh, aspire to be like them. And they said, oh, by the way, we may not look like this white sheet of paper. Besides, remember, they introduced the color white and the color black. We didn't have that. So we know how black looks like. We know how white looks like. But they turn around and say, the angels are white and we are white too. Never mind how we look. We may not look like this piece of paper, but believe we are white and we represent the angels. And you're black. You may not look like this cover of my phone, which is black. But you represent the devil. The devil is black, the devil is evil. We all must run away from the devil. You don't wanna represent the devil. Oh, by the way, you may not look like this black piece of paper, but you're black too. Then now let's go to church. And we kneel down in front of the white angels, in front of white Jesus, who we know very well Jesus Christ was not white. Even their own Bible tells us he had crimson skin. We know for a fact that Mary and Joseph were running away from King Herod. They were told to go to Egypt. Why? Because in Egypt, Jesus Christ would blend with those who would look more like him. If he was white, they would have told them to run to Europe. So we have all these obvious lies that we have been told. So for centuries, we have knelt and worshipped white Jesus and white angels and denied that which they told us represented us. So they systematically put us through a process of self-hate. It is not by surprise that we hate ourselves. We don't like each other. We don't trust each other. Understand that this has been a systematic process of criminalizing blackness, of teaching us and training us to hate everything that looks like us and educating that the more we, we look closer to what white people do, the better off we are. So we spend the rest of our lives and the lives of our children and the lives of generations to come if we do not do something about it, hating ourselves, teaching our children to hate ourselves. We are a sick people. Let's face it. We need healing. We have been so brainwashed to hate ourselves. Shalom, 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 shalom. As always, first I want to give you the praise and the glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah, Kadash, double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to my fellow Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters who have been edified by the truth of the scriptures of who we are, who the nations are. So there's a couple of things I just wanted to catch up on what she said here, what the lady was saying here, what the ambassador was saying. She's absolutely right. We are not black. They are not white. We are different shades of brown. They are different shades of red. She was referring to the Lord's color. She said he was crimson. The Lord is not, color is not described as crimson because crimson is red. His colors, the Lord's color is described as brass, as if burnt in a furnace. Um, she just probably made a mistake on that when she said crimson. He speaks about crimson and a worm, but the Lord's color is not described as crimson. His color in the Bible is described as brass and brass as if burned in a furnace. You know, you can go to Daniel chapter 10, Revelation chapter 1 to give you that information as such. But, you know, everything else that she was saying is absolutely right. We, you know, apart from saying that we are Africans because we, we are the Hebrew Israelites, but we came from the West Coast of Africa. We're not actually Hamites. We're not actually the descendants of Ham. Africans were the descendants of Shem. Shem comes from the line. Shem is Noah's eldest son. We are the Shemites. We are the Israelites. We come from the line. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob come from the line of Shem. So we are the true Hebrew Israelites that lived in the lands of Ham, that lived in Africa until these Europeans came and took us out and brought us to the West Coast to serve slavery. As, as, well as, you, as I'm going to show you, it's all Bible prophecy. But like what she was saying, you know, what these heathens did, they took the likeness, they took the likeness of, um, 
of a uh, of our of, of the prophets the prophets Yahweh Shai, they took the likeness of Yahweh Shai. You know, our Lord's name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus Christ. You know, his actual name is Yahweh Shai. He's a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah. You can go to the book, uh, I think it's Hebrews chapter 7, that will show you that. So, yeah, this is what they did. They they took the likeness, just like what it says in the book of um, Maccabees, where it tells about the heathens taking the likeness. The heathens sought to paint the likeness of the images in the scriptures. This is what they did. They changed the images of the prophets, the disciples, the apostles, the Hawashai, the Most High, from brown or so-called black to so-called white. All right? This is what they did. Our Lord is a dark-skinned man, just like the, just like the prophets are, the disciples, the Israelites, the Jews of the Bible. That's who they are. They're a people, a nation of color. And this is what the heathens did, all right? Because... I'm going to read it. Let me just, let's, let's quickly pull out some scriptures here, right? Let's pull out some scriptures while we're here. Let's see if we can get a couple. I'm going to switch the screen over so you can see what's going on as well. So, all right. So I hope you can see my screen. This is, we're going to go to the book of First Maccabees, chapter 3. And this is what they did basically and this this took mainly took place during the times of the renaissance the word renaissance means rebirth during the 15th and 16th century this 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 took place heavily during the 15th and 16th century so if we go to we're in the book of first maccabees chapter 3 and we're going to start at verse 45 it says, now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness, all right? Let's bring it, let's just open up. It says, now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down. And aliens, who are the aliens? These are the other nations. These are the heathens. These are, at this particular time, this was taking place during the time of Antiochus, all right? Antiochus Epiphany, right? During the times of the Maccabees. As we know who the Maccabees are, right? The from Matthias was the father, and he had five sons. Um John. John? Yeah. So yeah, he had five sons, yeah. Jonah, Johanna, John, they all called Cadius, Simon, who was called Thaddeus or Thassi, Judas. Who was actually called Maccabee, which means hammer. The word Maccabee means the hammer. That's Judas. He's probably the most famous of the five brothers, him and Simon. And he had Eliza, who was called Avram, and Jonathan. Yeah, it's Jonathan, yeah, whose surname was Aphius. All right. Those are the five sons of Matthias. Those are the Maccabees. So this was taking place during that time. So this is who the aliens are. It said, an aliens kept the stronghold. The heathens, at these times, these are, this is the Ptolemaic Empire, who called themselves Greeks, all right? Not the Ptolemy, sorry. I'm saying the Ptolemaic Empire. The Seleucid Empire that called themselves Greeks, because the Ptolemies were in Egypt. The Seleucids was like in Syria and northern Israel. Since the heathens had their habitation in that place, all right? These were... These were the Seleucid, this was Antiochus and his men who descend from the Seleucid Empire, all right? That's who we're talking about there. I'm totally, I'm just going to just double check because it is Seleucid, Seleucid, Lucid Empire, Dynasty. I'm positive it's Antiochus from the Seleucid, but let's just, just double check. Seleucid's Empire, but, 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 let's just have a quick look. Uh, yeah. So that's his father. That's Antiochus III the Great. That's the father of the man we're talking about, Antiochus Epiphany. All right. So just wanted to just double check. Sometimes I get them mixed up, the Seleucid and the Ptolemy. So anyway, the heathen 
had their habitation in that place in Jerusalem and joy was taken from Jacob who's Jacob Jacob is the forefather of the Israelites Jacob is another name for the Israelites for the Hebrew Israelites all right Jacob is another name for Israel all right so it says and the joy was taken from Jacob and the pipe with the harp was seized wherefore look at that, that's beautiful I love it when I see that the word that's just <laughs> Our kingdom, our name spelled out fully there. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Mashpah over against Jerusalem. For in Mashpah was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen. Antiochus, the Greeks, had what? Had sought to paint the likeness of their images. This is why, like what she was saying, you know, they, they, she's telling you that the angels are white. They say that the angels are white, that the Lord Yahweh is white, that the Most High is white, that the prophets are white, that the disciples are white. And this is what they did. This goes all the way back to Antiochus, where the heathens had sought to paint the likeness of their images. And they was able to do that in its fullness right in its in its maturity during the renaissance period right during the 14th and 15th century it was able to complete that painting the likeness they took open the book of the law what's the book of the law that's the bible the first five books of the bible is called the torah the word torah means the laws this is the book of the law is what we're reading out of right now we're in the heathens the edomites Right? This is who he's talking about, Esau, Eden, Edomites, the so-called white man, had sought to paint the likeness of their image. They were able to complete that during the times of the Renaissance. So, you know, we, we forward roughly 16, 1700 years later, they were able to complete, fulfill this, what they tried to do back then during the time of Antiochus. That's why they got our people worshipping white Jesus, white angels, white disciples, white apostles, white prophets, you know, white most high, everything to do with the Bible, white angels is so-called white. This is what they did. This is what she's speaking of. And then they taught you self-hate, to hate yourself, hate who you are, you know. But as the prophecy says, we're going to go to, uh, I want to go to, we're going to go to Deuteronomy. But you see, this was part of the prophecy that was going to happen to us as well, that we were going to end up worshipping these gods, these other gods, serving these other gods, or should we, could, should we say so-called gods of these other nations. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, And the Lord, Yehowah, that's the word Lord here, that's the Most High, that's Yehowah, his name is Yehowah, shall scatter thee amongst all people, amongst all people from one end of the earth even unto the other all right transatlantic slave trade that was the last great major scattering of the children of israel was the transatlantic slave trade all right from one end of the earth even unto the other from the from the, from the east from the continent of africa from parts of europe to the west all right, and then they took the Native American Indians from the West, which was the Americas, and brought them to their empires in Europe. So they was able to scatter the children of Israel from one end of the earth unto the other, because it's Bible prophecy. This had to happen. And there thou shalt serve other gods. White Jesus is another god that we are serving. Islam is another god that our people serve. Some of us are worshipping Hindu, Sikhs, and you know, the list goes on and on. These are all other gods. There's only one god, one power, one most high, one son. It's as simple as that. But the prophecy said that we were going to be scattered amongst all of the people from one end of the earth unto the other. The last major scattering was the transatlantic slave trade, the triangular slave trade. And there thou shalt serve other gods, as you see, as the woman was explaining, white Jesus, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So what are these churches and these mosques built out of? Either wood or stone, all right? These are the houses of worship that they brought you into, made out of wood and stone. This is where they're taking us. You see, 
Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm going to bring out a few precepts. It's, it's, it's heading it. It says, says, Judgment must come. That's to come upon the children of Israel. We have to face a judgment. All right? So let's read it through to verse 5. All right? This is part of the, this is why we were scattered. Because judgment had to come on us because we had gone off. We stopped following the laws of the Most High that He gave to Moses. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, uh, what we hear today, we still hear this today, whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, thus says the Lord, such as are for death, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are to the captivity to the captivity. Because that was the last major thing that happened to us was the captivity, the slavery. All right? Happened under many kingdoms, but the last kingdom to do it was the Edomites, Esau, so-called Europeans. And I will appoint over them four kinds, says the Lord. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, all of these things happened to us, right? The fowls of the heavens, when they lynched you, they left you in the fields for the, for the birds to eat you. They left you hanging from the bridges and the trees for days and weeks on end. And what was going to happen? The fowls of the heavens came and ate your body. During the civil rights process, pro, um, protests during the 50s and 60s and 40s, what was one of the main stain things that Esau used against you, their police and their army, was their dogs to tear you. That was, that was massive during the civil rights uprising in the 40s, 50s and 60s, was the dogs that the um, police force and the army used against our people. The fowls of the air of the heavens, after they lynched you, they left you hanging. The modern day sword is the gun to slay you, right? To shoot you down dead in the street. No quarrels. The police could do it. Esau could do it as a, as a citizen. You know, we've seen, we've seen, you know, we've seen the, the, the latest ones, the Trayvon Martins, and they're talking about stand their ground. These are all the things that were going to happen to us, right? And the beast of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to remove, and I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. Transatlantic slave trade. Transatlantic slave trade. And before that, the Romans. When the Romans took us down in 70 AD, they took us into slavery, the ones that they, would, they kept captives. Before the Romans, the Babylonians took us into Babylonia, into, in, into Babylon, captivity. The Greeks had us in captivity during the times of Antiochus, but the last major one that removed us into all the kingdoms of the earth was the transatlantic slave trade, the triangular slave trade. And I will cause them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. This only happened to our people, to our ancestors from the west coast of Africa. This happened to the Native American Indians of North, South America and Canada as well. They were also removed from the Americas and taken to Europe and Asia into captivity by these Edomites, Esau. It says, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. All right? For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Jerusalem was a people before a place, but who's going to have pity on us? Or who shall bemoan thee? No one gives a damn about our plight. Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? No one is asking you, Israelites, how are you doing? How is it? How is it for you? No one's concerned about your plight. You're looking to erase your history from history. They're looking to erase your plight. Everything that happened to you from history. They don't. They're not. They're, no one's concerned about you. Why? Because you are the true children of Israel. You Native American Indians, you Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans, and Puerto Ricans, you African Americans, West Indians, and Caribbeans, you are the true 12 tribes of Israel. 
No one gives a damn about you. No one is saying, no one's having pity on you, or Jerusalem. No one gives a shit about you. No one's bemoaning you. No one's there lamenting over you. And who shall ask, who shall ask, go aside and ask how thou doest? No one ain't asking how you're doing, Jerusalem, Israel. No one ain't asking you because no one's concerned. They're hoping that they can, they can bury everything to do with your history, what they did to you. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So, you know, we say this time and time again. We're in the last phase of our judgment. All right? We truly are. You know, Israel is waking up. Not all of Israel is going to wake up, but Israel is waking up. All right? Yeah, no one gives a damn. No one gives a damn. Let's go to... Okay. I want to go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, alright? There's a particular precept in there I want to just run on. Start at verse 7. I'm going to read a few verses down. Daniel chapter 9, verse 7 it says, O oh Lord, and this is Daniel saying this in a prayer about the children of Israel during their captivity under the Babylonians. But this applies to Israel today, to us today. As you must understand, these prophecies were going to follow us and overtake us everywhere we go. They was going to become, um, the Bible speaks of it, they, it says that they were going to become Remember what Moses said, right? What the Lord said to Moses. Deuteronomy 28, right? About to Deuteronomy 28. But these curses were going to stay upon us, right? It says here, but, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when something overtakes you, it's there before you get there. So everywhere that we were scattered to, to the four corners of the world, these curses were going to be there waiting for us. So Daniel was saying this in a prayer, all right? about the children of Israel during their captivity under the Babylonians. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us, confusion of faces. Right? So it means it mean shame. As, as at this day, to the men of Judah, right? Those in captivity during the Babylonian captivity, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, those that were left in Jerusalem, because not everyone was taken to Babylon, there were some Israelites of the more poorer ones, the ones that had nothing, literally had nothing, were left in Jerusalem, all right? And unto all Israel, so we know all Israel wasn't in, wasn't in Israel, wasn't in Israel during the captivity, the Babylonian captivity, because remember, the northern kingdom had already gone into captivity under the Assyrian Empire roughly 125 years prior to this captivity. And the majority of them never came back to the promised land. The majority of them came to the Americas. Today we know as the Native American Indians of North, South America and Canada. Right? Today who they refer to as Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. So we know this is, this is not talking about all Israel that was in Israel at the time. It's talking about all Israel that's scattered around the world. What are you going to see? He says here, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off in the Americas. <laughs> the ones that would have been near would have been, you know, in the vicinities of the Middle East. Some still in the Assyrian Empire, some in the Babylonian Empire, you know. But those that were far off, those ones that went to the Americas that never came back to the Promised Land. Today we refer to as the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. Through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, all the countries where we, the Lord has driven us, 
as the prophecy said, that we were going to be driven to all of the countries, scattered to all of, did the Lord say, 28? And the Lord shall scatter thee amongst all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. All right? And there thou shalt serve other gods. So Daniel is praying. Because Daniel knows. Remember, at this particular time, Daniel has the Torah. He has the books of the laws. He has Exodus, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and Numbers. He has the books of the laws. So he knows the prophecies that was going to befall the children of Israel for not following the laws, commandments, and statutes. But it says there, through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their what? Because of their trespass. That they have trespassed against thee, O Lord, to, un belong is, to us belong is confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have what? Sinned against thee. To the Lord our power belongs mercies and forgiveness. And this is the period that we are looking for. We're, we're, for those of us that are repented and come back to the Lord, this is what he's going to show us. Mercies and forgiveness. For those of us that have truly repented and accepted Yahweh Shai as our saviour and understand truth that we have been preaching, that we are the true children of Israel, we are the Hebrew Israelites, and who the other nations are, that the so-called white man is the Edomites, the Africans are the Hamites, the Arabs are the Ishmaelites, the Chinese are the Moabites. The judgments that we have been telling you that's going to befall them during the war of Armageddon. The mark of the beast that's coming, that's here, that's going to go global very soon, which is the microchip. The deception that these Edomites are going to bring upon the world. So for those of us that truly have repented and converted and come back and that have woken up, and through our faith, believe Yahweh Shai is truly coming back to establish his kingdom on earth and to take down all of these nations. So it says, to the Lord our power belong his mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. And we must accept as a people that we did rebel against the Most High and against Yahweh Shai. We must accept our part in our fall. Because we are in these human bodies, we are in these sinful bodies, we will we were, we were only but going to sin. It wasn't a matter of if, it was just when and how bad it was going to be for us. So we know now how bad it was going to be and how bad it's still going to be because there's still a last, there's the last length of the judgment to come, Jacob's trouble. But the Lord is merciful and he's going to forgiveness and he's going to show that to his elect. Those of you that have truly come back to the saviour, to the true saviour, not to white Jesus Christ, to Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High. Those of you that are of Israel, that in the spirit know that they are Israelite and they are part of the 12 tribes. The Lord is coming to show his mercies and his forgiveness to the elect of his people. So it says here, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our power to walk in his laws which he set before his servants, the prophets, as we showed you in Deuteronomy 5, 28 and 15, right? The Lord set, sorry, here to Moses. That's his servant, the prophets. He told Moses what we need to do. But unfortunately, we were going to go off because the Bible prophesied that we were going to go off. So it didn't matter. We were, going to, we were always going to go off. It says, yea, all Israel... Have what have transgressed the law? What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. All Israel have transgressed the law. So sin is, so we can quickly find it. Is it first John's? I think it's first John chapter three. I may be wrong. Verse four. There you go. Beautiful. It says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law who was the laws given to the children of israel it wasn't given to any other nation the lord made it quite clear all right he only gave his laws to israel all right psalms i believe it's 147 
Psalms 147 verse 19. He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. All right? He showeth his word unto Jacob. Jacob is Israel, the Israelites, 12 tribes. His statutes and his judgments, his statutes are his laws and his judgments unto Israel, the 12 tribes. He has not dealt so with any nation. No nation has, was given these laws. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you, the Lord. So these nations haven't known the Most High's judgment, but they're going to know it during the war of Armageddon and the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai and the angels. The nations are going to know the Most High's judgment. But the only nation that's known the Most High's judgment as a nation is the nation of Israel. So we go back to Daniels 9 and 11. It says, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. You understand? And he has confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. This is, this is the key. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a people before a place, right? Israel. For under the whole heaven has not been done which has been done upon Jerusalem. Why is that? He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. These nations have not known the Most High's judgment, but they're going to know his judgment. It says here, as it is written in the law of Moses, all the evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our power that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. And this is what we do when we're preaching to you. It's in the hope that you would turn from your iniquities and understand the truth of the Bible. What is the Bible saying about our ancestors, about our history, about our future, our prophecies? What is the Bible? What is the truth of the scriptures? What is it these brothers are teaching us without adding to the Bible or taking away from the Bible, showing you the cold, hard facts and truth of what the Bible says about the true children of Israel, what was going to happen to them, why it happened to them, and what's to come in the very near future that we're at. So this is all what we're doing, family. We're preaching and teaching and edifying so that you might turn, and for our own sakes, for our own sakes as well, for our own salvation, that you may turn from your iniquities and understand the truth. They changed our Lord, Yahweh Shai, from a black man to a white man. They changed his name. They called him Jesus Christ. They changed the, dis the disciples, the prophets, the apostles from so-called black people to so-called white people. They made you believe that the angels and the Most High are so-called white people. It says, therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord, our power, is righteous in all his works which he has which he doeth for we obeyed not his voice it's as simple as that family because we obeyed not his voice let me just grab one more precept before we shut this down um the lamentations hold on lamentations let's see if I can find it. chapter two yeah, we just got chapter two. Verse 15, it says, All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. The daughter of Jerusalem is another poetic name for the 12 tribes of Israel, for the Israelites. So all that see us, all these nations that look upon us, they clap their hands at thee and they hiss that nigger, look at that nigger, look at that spit, and they wag their head. So, oh, I don't want to be like, oh, oh. Look, at those, look at those Negroes, look at those spits, those Hispanics and Latinos, look at those Mexicans. Oh, no, no, no. They wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Because these devils 
and in particular the elite, know who we are. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. This is what they looked for, to see us at the bottom. This is the day they looked for, to see us totally as a destroyed people. We have found, we have seen it. There's a scripture I'm thinking of in Isaiah. We'll probably finish there because she mentioned the words that, that we are a sick people. And I think there's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 1 that speaks about that. The whole head is sick. Yeah, here it is. And we're going to finish here. It says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. We see what our people are doing to ourselves and continue to do to each other. This is why the only way out is, 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 is this truth of who we truly are, is to wake up to this truth, is to come back to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, come back to your Savior to repent, to convert so that your sins can be blotted out. Come back to your true Savior. Get out of the churches, get out of the mosque, the synagogue, the temple. Get away from white Jesus. Get away from Muhammad, you know? And all these other so-called gods that, um, that they worship in the houses of wood and stone to separate themselves from them and come back to your true heritage, Israel. We are the true children of Israel. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. So Isaiah says, a sinful nation, a people led in with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. We can all see this. Yet we go into these politicians to try to save us and to your imams and your priests and your pastors and your churches they can't do nothing for you because they are not telling you who you are and why these things are happening to you and why we're in this position and why they want to continue to call you black and call themselves white and why they want you to continue to worship their white jesus or their their ishmaelite muhammad and all the rest of this shit that they want to throw at you why they want you to vote labor conservative democrat republic while they're still selling you that, they're not, they, they will never tell you who you truly are. So you, can, so you can continue being a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. So you become corrupt like your slave masters, like your politicians. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. This is what we have done, family. They have gone away backward. All of these things that I just mentioned, that's what's happened. We've gone away backwards. But this is the way out. It's this truth that we are trying to show you in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. We're trying to show you who you are, who you are. You are the true children of Israel. It says, Why should we be why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart, which is the mind, is faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and, and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, and they will never be closed as long as you are part of this system. As long as you, you want to be a part of their system and not part of the who you truly are. To come back to your true saviour. The scripture says, use the world, don't abuse it. You don't have to sign up to what Esau, what Esau wants you to do. Don't sign up to vote. Don't sign up to become their politicians, their police officers. Don't sign up to their armies. Separate yourself from these things that they want you to do to defend this wickedness that they've established. They have not been closed. The wounds have not been closed. And we are trying to help you close those wounds and give you understanding. Neither bound up neither mollified with ointment the ointment is the bible is the scriptures is your heritage the ointment is the repentance your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire your land strangers devour it in your presence who's in the land of israel today edomites 
and Ishmaelites. Eastern Europeans and Arabs, Edomites and Israelites, they are devouring your land in your presence. And it is desolate because we are not home and we're not going to be brought home until Yahweh Shai comes back to take down all of these nations. As overthrown by strangers, it has been overthrown by strangers. Strangers are in the land of Israel today that call themselves Israelis and Jewish or Palestinians. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. That's what we're like. We're like a cottage in a vineyard. As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city. It said, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. And that's what the Lord's coming back for, his remnant. We would refer to them as the elect. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So that small remnant is what the Lord is coming back for to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. He's coming back for that remnant to do this. Daniel 7. Let's quickly go straight to the point of one past it. The Son of Man presented. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, as Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came with the clouds of heaven in the chariots, what the world calls UFOs, and came to the Ancient of Days, that's the Most High, Yahweh, who the world calls God, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and a glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion this is what's coming for those of us that have repented and woke, woken up and have accepted this truth his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed the Lord is getting ready to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. But we have to suffer the last two major prophecies, the mark of the beast, of microchip, and the war of Armageddon. For we know in the mix of the war of Armageddon is when the Lord is coming to what? To establish his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. Because his dominion is an everlasting dominion. Not Esau's what we're living in today, this so-called white man's dominion. The Lord's dominion, which is coming, which is the kingdom of heaven, which shall not pass away. It's never going to pass away. And his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth, that which shall not be destroyed. We well, praise us to you. Help us. Shem Yom Shai. By Shem Rekat. Kudash. Shalawam. 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 Dablonus to the, to the apostles of Great Millstone. As always, I pray you are edified. As I like to say, keep praying, keep safe, and hold on to this truth. Because we are the children of Yisrael. That's who we are. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises. That's who we are, family. That's truly who we are.